Hey folks, I read an article yesterday on uh, NPR. I'll post, a I'll, post it in the, I'll post a link to it in the description. It's about a young man from Georgia, 18 years old, still lives with his family, still lives with his parents, until recently. He's now in jail. He was um, one of the people who stormed the Capitol on January 6th. He was photographed and videoed in there trying to break into offices and photographed on the Senate floor. From all accounts in the story that NPR did, wonderful man, wonderful, wonderful young man, wonderful boy, builds tree houses. I love building. I love building tree houses is one of my dreams. The minute I read this article, I felt bad for this kid. Now his lawyers, the reason for the article is that his lawyers are trying to get him released from jail into the custody of his family. They're saying he's a good kid. They're saying he's nothing to worry about. He's not a threat. They're saying that, you know, he was just caught up in the moment. He, he, was, he was wrapped up. He was caught up with the wrong people and, and ended up being swept into things. The article also goes on to talk about his social media accounts and that his social media accounts were filled with statements like President Trump is calling us to fight and, and various things. But then his lawyers say something interesting. As part of his defense, his lawyers are arguing that he was radicalized. That's what happened. He was radicalized. Now when I read that, my, my brain instantly went back to what we say about terrorists, that they're radicalized. They're not bad people. They've been radicalized by elements of their culture, elements of their religion. They've been radicalized to believing the things that they believe and to do, ultimately to do the things that they do. But then my brain, as it often does, said, well, who radicalized him? I didn't radicalize him, right? Leftist priest, I didn't radicalize him guy that preaches inclusion, I didn't radicalize him. Person that preaches that we should be sharing and taking care of each other, that we should be sacrificing for our neighbors and for the strangers in our community. The people that say LGBTQ community should be included in the church. The people that we didn't radicalize him. The people that the right says we should be worried about didn't radicalize him. The people that radicalized him were people that spoke his language, that believed what he believed, supported the candidates he supported. The people that radicalized were people on the right. Now in this case, that's the situation a little bit of a deeper understanding, a little bit of a deeper consideration. And what we come to is that those types of folks who radicalize others exist on both sides of the spectrum. They exist on the left, they exist on the right. They wave the liberal flag, they wave the conservative flag. For the last few years, I've been following the news much more closely through YouTube than anything else, through the different channels that are out there on YouTube. And yes, you all know that I have a big size man crush on Boa the fifth column. But one of the things that I would say about him, and, and I am just using him as, as an example because he's a great example of it. Through the work that he did over the last year or two talking about politics, he offered his, his input, he offered his, his opinion, he offered his wisdom and his insight. He told us that this was wrong or this was right. And he told us why, and he told us how maybe it could be different. He told us how to, how to watch for it ourselves in our own lives. But never once did I feel like he was vilifying anybody. Never once did I feel like he was saying, they have bad policy and therefore they're horrible people. I would walk away from his videos feeling more knowledgeable feeling like wisdom had been imparted to me. I didn't ever walk away one of his, from one of Bo's videos feeling stressed. I never walked away from one of his videos feeling anxious and fearful. I didn't ever walk away from one of his videos 
feeling any sort of contempt or hate for somebody who had a different political value than I did. But there were other news channels that I watched from, you know, left-leaning news channels that I watched. Man, at the end of the day, yeah, they gave me the insight. They shared the knowledge with me. But walking away, turning them off, I felt, I just felt stressed out. I felt so anxious. I felt so overwhelmed. I felt like they, that, that they were informing me of how villainous these other people. I could feel, I could feel the hatred, the animosity the malice, the judgment. And it was, it was gross. This kid, 13, 14 years old, he'd be introduced to this. 15, 16, get a little deeper. 17, 18, gonna be a man. The voice has changed. Got some whiskers on his chin wants to do something important like we all do, follows those voices that say the same things as the people in his community, that say the same things, support the same people as his parents, support the same people that he thinks he would support. And then they start teaching him hate. They start teaching him they start filling him with stress and anger. They start filling him with fear that someone is going to come and take away the things that he thinks are most precious. Now, like I said, I, I never radicalized him, and I pray I never radicalize anybody. It's not who I want to be. As leftist as I may be, I didn't, he didn't have, his parents didn't have to worry about me radicalizing him. As inclusive as I may be, his parents didn't have to worry about me radicalizing. As, as pro-LGBTQ community as I may be, his parents didn't have to worry about me radicalizing him. They needed to worry about the people who spoke the same way they did, radicalizing him. We don't need to be afraid of the other because they sit across the aisle. We don't need to be afraid of people who have a different political value than us. We all, left and right, need to be looking at those voices that are all around us, that fill us with stress and anxiety as they talk about others who hold a different political view, that fill us with hatred, that fill us with fear that those people with a different political view are going to come and steal something from us. They're going to come and destroy something that we love. Those are the ones who are leading us to further division, to further polarization within our societies. Those are the voices who are leading us to loathe others who sit opposed to us. Those are the voices who are, who are filling us with hatred, with fear, with contempt. That's the voice of the enemy. That's the voice we need to worry about radicalizing our children, our friends and our family and our neighbor. Be careful of those voices. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you and may you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. I pray as we go forward that we won't only be mindful of the voice of the enemy, we will add our voice to the choir that speaks love, that speaks inclusion, that speaks justice. Amen.